Stem cells are undifferentiated cells in the body that have the potential to give rise to one or many different types of more specialized cells. Stem cells are capable of self-renewal, and they are crucial elements of the body's development and regeneration process. Stem cells reside in specialized microenvironments that can be found in various locations throughout the body, depending on which type of specialized cells will arise from them. These microenvironments, or niches, foster interactions between the stem cells and their non-stem neighbors, which produces substance that provides structural support and other factors key to stem cell development and retention, called an extracellular matrix within the body's tissues. These niches contain all of the factors necessary for stem cells to continue to self-renew, as well as stalling the cellular programs that allow them to differentiate until needed. Take the hematopoietic stem cell, HSC for example. This cell has the potential to give rise to all of the many different cells of the blood. Its niche is located in the bone marrow and is comprised of many different cells, including osteoblasts or bone cells. Only when contact is lost between the hematopoietic stem cells and osteoblasts does the HSC begin its processes of differentiation, which can lead to the production of cells from red and white blood cells to platelets. Another kind of stem cell that is actively used for treatment is the mesenchymal stem cell. These MSCs are also found to be useful targets for stem cell therapies because of their abilities to self-replicate as well as differentiate into multiple kinds of connective tissues. For example, muscle, bone, cartilage, and tendon are all examples of cell types that can differentiate from the original MSC cell. This replicative potential has direct implications for the types of stem cell therapy treatments that can be considered. One specific kind of therapy where the adult MSC cells are used for are in musculoskeletal disorders because of the multiple kinds of tissue repair that are possible, such as skin cells and neurons. The importance of the interactions between stem cells and their environments are so important that they have become the focus of techniques to possibly improve success rates of stem cell therapies. In research, it has been shown that, that through the direct hormonal stimulation of the niche, it may be possible to increase the number of stem cells produced for donation purposes, replenish the stem cells that have been destroyed through chemotherapy treatments for cancer, or to help mobilize transplanted stem cells to the niches that will help them survive and produce new cells throughout the body. So because this is a phase one, um, we were, we were looking specifically at whether or not we could do this in people at various levels of ALS progression and not kill anybody, um, not paralyze anybody, not rob anyone of their um, bowel and bladder function, their sexual function. Um, there are just, there are so many risks. These are um, neural stem cells from the spinal cord of a fetus that was um, eight weeks old. Okay. It was donated by the mother um, 15 years ago. And so the original cells, um, you know, have been passaged many times. They will begin to hopefully generate the growth factors and um, different supportive um, proteins that will uh, potentially halt the or slow the destruction of cells that are already being attacked by um, ALS and preserve the function of the cells that are still um, intact. But it's still amazing that we're able to stick a needle into someone's spinal cord five times or ten times or fifteen times and have them return to baseline which um, pretty much everyone did. No one experienced any um, uh, bad outcomes right. from the surgery. Of course, everyone still had ALS. Right. Everyone continued to progress in their disease. Although this stem cell study is in the trial phase, 
It is important that patients participate because they are helping to bridge a gap between health research and clinical treatment.